if you know Jesus, I am sorry to break it to you. This church is not for you. Yeah, but I just gave my life to Christ last week at Elevation. Last week was the last week that Elevation Church existed for you. Hello, friends. My name is Jonathan Burris. I'm a husband, father, and pastor. I've been in the ministry for more than 28 years, and I love studying and discussing the Bible. If you share those interests, then this is the channel for you. What is a seeker-sensitive church? Does it matter, and should your church be following that model? I want to discuss that today. We do one thing. We preach Jesus so people far from God can know Jesus. And then we train them up so that others can know Jesus. It's called kingdom multiplication. It's what Elevation Church is all about. The last 10 years have revealed a new form of an old pursuit masquerading within the evangelical church. Churches have identified or branded themselves as seeker sensitive. Many of these seeker sensitive churches have become mega churches with charismatic pastors enjoying celebrity-like personality status in the evangelical world and in the secular world. These pastors have, uh, and their churches, boast of millions of converts. They fill massive buildings and their non-controversial and non-confrontational styles have garnered support from Christians and non-Christians alike. But is it biblical? A seeker church tailors their services to the unsaved, or unchurched person by making their experience as, in, as inviting, comfortable, and non-controversial as possible. Don't focus on their sin. They already know that they're a sinner. Don't beat them down by telling them that they're not good. People are already depressed. Don't tell them that they're wicked and sinful. There's no need to focus on sin, judgment, judgment righteousness, and morality. People need the good news of the gospel, not the bad news that they're sinners. <laughs> now you may think that I'm exaggerating, but I am not. Listen to Stephen Furtick, pastor of Elevation Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's always been in you. It's always been in you. That teaching gift has always been in you. You just had to get past what you would put on yourself. The idea that I'm not a preacher, I'm just a little girl. The idea is to get as many non-Christians inside the building as possible to hear the good news. And many are willing to do whatever it takes to get them in the door. Elaborate musical concerts that rival the secular performances of the biggest pop stars to keep people entertained and hyped for the uplifting message from the dynamic and energetic pastor is the prescription that seems to work best for these churches. While seeker-sensitive churches claim to have a noble purpose behind the theatrics, they're trying to reach the unsaved with a gospel that does not involve sin, hell, repentance, or a Jesus who is the exclusive Savior and the only way to heaven. These things are seen as too divisive. The premise of this movement is that people are seeking after God and they really want to know Him, but church is scary and traditional services are too boring. It's too much of a culture shock to reach and engage today's non-Christian in an old-fashioned, outdated way. The biggest problem with that ideology is the very premise that the unsaved really are seeking after God. In Romans 3.11, the Apostle Paul says, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeks after God. Worldly people are not looking for God. John 3.16 tells us, that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. But as much as God loves mankind, the unsaved hates God. John 3, 19 and 20 tells us that, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. The Bible teaches that the unsaved are not seeking after God because they do not want to be reproved, which means they do not want to be scolded or corrected. Now Jesus taught in John 6, that no one will desire to be saved until the Father draws him. It's only then that an unbeliever will, by grace, repent of his sins and believe the gospel by faith. The unsaved do not need blurred lines of a deluded gospel 
that has had sin, righteousness, and judgment removed. Those are core parts of the gospel. No one will ever be saved until they know why they must be saved. Further, seeker-sensitive churches carry out their mistaken mission at the expense of the believer. You heard a clip earlier where a pastor said that his church stopped being for them the moment they were saved. That's absurd. The church is specifically for the saved. We cannot neglect our Lord's command in Matthew 28, 19, and 20, where He instructed us to go and make disciples. People cannot observe all the things that Jesus has commanded if they are not taught these things. In short, if we tailor the church service to entertain the goats, we will not feed the sheep. And that's what we're commanded to do. So what's the best way to reach the unsaved? Well, Jesus answered that question for us in John 12, uh, 32, when He said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. 1 Corinthians 1, 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And the three verses, and three verses after that, in verse number 21, we're told, It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. We do not need to water down the gospel to reach the non Christian. We need the full potency of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which proclaims a Savior who will save us by Himself, for Himself, and from Himself.